The next manga awards are nearing and I try to read as many of the nominated manga of both categories as I can. So I read 6 manga from the web category and 6 manga from the print. Of both categories I will read the first 3 chapters to give me a feel of the story and the continued quality. And at the end of this video I will give you my thoughts on who I think will win and who I think should win. Are you ready? Then let's go! I'm a class president, but to be in love so much that I'd be a bad girl is an awful title. And the series isn't that much better. As the only manga in this entire list where I have only read 2 chapters instead of 3 because no one is translating this story, should probably say enough. The main plot is that of a super serious female class president who is in love with an even more stricter male disciplinary president. And since the disciplinary president only talks to the people breaking the rules, the class president decided to change her entire personality from rule abiding nice girl to rule breaking delinquent. And the main joke is that she constantly breaking character by being too nice. Or actually doing her class presidential tasks. While the art is okay, there is little to no substance to the story, as it is mostly just the main character's massive breasts, or the main love interest being uninteresting and shouting in her face. I would not recommend this manga, even if you love a girl with some giant knockers. Star Strike It Rich is basically what you get if you make a Baki series about female fighting. Accompanied by amazing action patterning, a good understanding of fist fighting and an interesting look in the female side of the Japanese underworld. Without some of the more exaggerated body types we are known to see in Baki. But as I'm only 3 chapters in, that stuff can change in a heartbeat. The characters are also quite interesting with the main character being a retired fighter and her two friends are a cop and an heir to a crime family. However, we haven't followed the cover girl much, who in my opinion is the most interesting, even in her short appearance, as the first few chapters are more about the manager trying to set up the fighting underground tournament. The way the manager interacts with the two shady friends and the characterization of all three of them made it fun reading through it, even though there is little to no fighting in chapter 2 or 3. I have strongly recommended this manga because I think it has the capabilities to reach very high places and I can't wait to read more after finishing this video. How to Care for a Human is a very cute series. It shows an eldritch horror who has a good heart as he tries to care for a stray human he found. I'm in love with the artwork as it doesn't look like any other Japanese media artwork. It's very unique. We also after every chapter get a bonus chapter with some nice tidbits from the point of view of the eldritch horror about humans. I highly recommend this manga as it's really short with only 3 chapters out as of recording. Rai 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 is what you get if you combine Kaiju number 8, Guns and Dandadan together to get a weird series, where a lot of the time is focused on humor and rude interactions between characters. But the comedy just doesn't land for me. While the main character who picked up her father's debt and tries to work hard enough so that her family never has to worry about money ever again, is kind of a cute characterization and I hope more is done with that aspect of her the main character. The world is also really interesting, as they live in a world devastated by war between humanity and aliens. That humanity eventually won, but the remnants of the alien attack are still visible, with space vermin and space pets still roaming around, making it hard to live. With space pets being small bug-like creatures, while space vermin are more like giant kaiju. And the one vermin design that we saw in the first few chapters is quite interesting but I'm not yet vibing with most of the actual human characters. I am interested in exploring the world further though. Centuria, whoa. This manga really grabbed me like no other. The characters feel very human, though maybe a bit too nice or too evil from both sides. I get what they were trying to do with the first chapter though. The art style, the artwork is fantastic with very detailed characters and horrifying monster designs. I don't want to say too much about this as I think you should check the first chapter yourself as it's free on Manga Plus, 
but we follow a boy who's a stowaway on a slave ship and becomes slave number 101. The boy who has only seen betrayal from his close ones finds kinship in the other slaves as they suffer through the same hellish conditions. The following chapters are equally beautiful. Just whatever you do, whatever manga you might watch after this video, read this one. Again, I do not want to say too much because the first chapter is a roller coaster and spoiling it might ruin the fun of it. With Worry Dragon, I read it when it first came out, but I dropped it after one chapter back then. But after reading it again, it is a really cute series. I like the art style because everything just looks adorable. And the dialogue is very natural and snappy. I also like how Ruri talks differently with her friends than her mom, like saying dragon traits with her mom, but using more pop culture terms like dragon powers with her friends. Though people in this series are way too nice. Like, it's cute how everyone is nice, but it also makes it hard to feel like it all being real. Like, it's a very faux look at how nice everything is. Like, she almost gave one of her classmates third degree burns while almost singeing his hair. And he's like, nah, forget about it. Like, he wasn't about to be disfigured or brutally murdered if he was two or more centimeters back. That was what made me drop the series when I initially came out. I just couldn't get into the headspace of the characters, but after giving it another chance and reading the first three chapters, I am willing to read further and see where this is going now after it's finally back from the hiatus. As one of the most talked about manga, I already knew quite a lot about Kagurabachi, but for some reason I never actually sat down and read it. And now that I did it, I get you all, there is some great work being done here, as the first few chapters do an amazing job characterizing the players involved, especially the main character's dad, who gets a lot of the visual humor in this manga that I'm not used to seeing in this medium. Most of the time it is exaggerated slapstick humor that you see in mangas, but the subtle movement and nuanced expressions make the comedy land way better than the exaggerated expressions of slapstick comedy and make it a joy to read. I don't know if this is considered a comedy manga, but out of this entire video, out of all the mangas I read, this is the funniest manga that I've read. And not to mention the action. The way the movement is drawn, it's like watching an animated storyboard. You can literally send some pages to an anime studio and they wouldn't need to touch anything before they go to animate it. It just looks that good. On top of that, the mystery and setup of the plot is very well laid out and makes me interested in finding out more about what is really going on. Cosmos is a manga that I'm not sure what to think of it. While the character design and action looks good, the story and the world are not as interesting as some of the other worlds we visited in this very video. With aliens living among us, there's an insurance company that makes it easier for these aliens to integrate in society. However, I'm not really pulled in as I'm still quite unsure what the agency does that the main character eventually works for. While chapter 1 was quite interesting as a personal connection was formed between the alien and the main character, it is saddening that the same connection isn't continued. There are tidbits of the main character and the alien and I think that that is a way more interesting story to be told than the actual story that is being told. Astro Royale gives us a post-apocalyptic world where a meteor slammed into Tokyo and given some people superpowers. The main character is part of a gang and as the only real song among hundreds of adopted sons, there was already quite a bit of tension between them all. But now that they all got superpowers, the power struggle now became a super power struggle. The premise actually was pretty good at the beginning. The character designs are also really interesting, but the one thing I really disliked was the storyline. As the main character makes the same mistake as what the writer did with his other series, Tokyo Revengers, where he wants to save all his siblings even though they want to kill him. At least, now the main character isn't as weak as Takamichi. Versus is a new manga by the creative mind of One, the same guy that created Mob Psycho and One Punch Man, where initially we followed a fantasy-like world trying to defeat the Demon Lord. But eventually, after losing a lot, 
they called help from another world. And so did every other alternative world, fusing the world with like several other works of fiction, all being pushed to the brink of extinction. We got the main fantasy world, space marine world, Godzilla world and plenty more. While it was quite hard to read through at the first few chapters, because everything seems just so hopeless. However, it does make me curious if it ever gets better and if so, how? The story also seems kind of a mess right now, a lot of the character and elements were introduced in chapter 2 and 3. While it can lead to an interesting world building, I'm not sure how it will go. With that being said, I am interested in more and will probably read further to see if it actually gets better. Convenient Semifriend is a 4 comma style manga where I think it's a rom-com-ish where a shy girl who can't socialize very well gets to be the semi-friend of her roommate. With the roommate being someone who loves intimacy and just flirts around with other girls. Semi-friend is kinda explained as something that isn't a friend but more, but not as extreme as a friend with benefits, as there is no sex involved. But it is quite sexual though. The girls do look quite cute and I enjoy the character designs and whenever it breaks the 4 style it does look gorgeous. And the main girl basically going, trade deal. You get a shy down bad ticket and a snicker semi friend and I get privacy. Was quite funny but also the only real interaction that stayed in my mind. There's a lot of Yuri baiting with for me no further interest in continuing this series any further as I have no interest in this manga as I quite dislike the 4 comma style, since I have quite a bit of trouble reading it this way as it just doesn't make sense to me. Tower Dungeon is what you get if you made a Dark Souls castle into a manga. There's a real sense of forebodingness of the whole art style, but one of my favorite things was the hyping up of a tower where the princess was kidnapped to. When we eventually make it to some sort of tower, everyone was like, easy peasy lemon squeezy, I can climb that tower. Until some soldiers are like, uh, that's not the tower. To only have the clouds make way to reveal the actual tower that's like so massive, you can even see the smaller tower from the white shot. While did praise the art style, some of the angles chosen in the first chapter were quite weird and honestly, the first chapter to me is one of the weakest aspects of this entire series. As it introduced a lot of elements that were quickly abandoned in the second and third chapter, for a more smaller cast and an interesting dynamic between the remaining soldiers with the one volunteer with crazy farm strength. Like I know you had to show us the strength of the army so that when they were taken away and the smaller squad was now entering the castle dungeon, they were having a lot more trouble than they had before. Just showing how fucked they are. I'm quite interested in reading this manga further as I have never read anything like this, but it seems like this artist has a lot of similar work so when I'm caught up I might read those as well. So those were the mangas I read. There are more on the list but to read all of them is quite impossible as most of them don't even have English translations yet. So who do I think is going to win? Most likely it are Kagurabuchi for the printed manga and Ruby Dragon for the web manga. Both have such a large following here in the west that I can't imagine them being any less popular in Japan. Although we westerners could have also voted in this competition. But which mangas do I want to win? Well, like I said in the video themselves, both Kagurabuchi and Ruby Dragon are quite good. And honestly I have no problem with them winning. But I have to say that for print I enjoyed Tower Dungeon quite a lot as well. And I'm way more interested into seeing that continued than with all the other series. Same with Centuria in the web manga. They both had such strong starts that I love to really see them win and I voted them both as my favorite manga in this competition. Maybe I make a little bit of an update video when the results are in, but for now, I'm Durkoin and thank you for watching.